three, welcome back to our story, Cinder Boy. I'm going to read part two today. And last time we left him at home watching the match on the TV because his horrible family had gone without him and made him stay at home and clean the whole house from top to bottom. So, remember, he was sat at home watching. It was going badly. It was 10 nil to the other team. And... The TV started to talk to him. So let's see what happens next. So here is where we got up to. <gasps> Someone's talking to him through the TV. Wonder who it is. <gasps> and look at his face. I wonder how he must be feeling. <gasps> let's carry on. Who, who, who are you? He stuttered. I am your TV godmother, said the face on the television. And guess what, Cindy? You shall go to the Big Cup final. But I don't have anything to wear, stammered, C stammered Cinderboy. Don't worry, Cinderboy. Just press button 13 on the remote control, said the TV godmother. Cinderboy wiped his eyes with the back of his hand and held out the remote control. He pressed button 13. Kabam! As if by magic, the scruffy old clothes he was wearing disappeared and Cinderboy stood tall and handsome, dressed in a pink silk shirt and pink silk shorts. On his feet were a pair of brand new football boots with gleaming glass studs. I think pink shorts and pink shirts, is that what the team was wearing? Oh, thank you, TV Godmother. But how will I get to the Big Cup final? Oh, you are a big worrier, said the voice from the TV. Press button 14 on the remote control. Cinderboy pressed button 14. As if by magic, the old sofa changed into a long, shiny pink limousine with a pink uniformed chauffeur at the wheel. Oh, Thank you, thank you, cried Cinderboy. Oh my goodness, look at that for a car. He's going to have a great time, isn't he? Just one thing, Cindy doll, said the face on TV. No one must recognise you. Wear this mask at all times. A hand reached out of the screen holding a pink silk mask. And most important of all, you must return home before the referee blows the final whistle. Without a second thought, Cinderboy grabbed the mask and jumped into the limousine and roared out through the door. Oh, how exciting! It seemed like only seconds before we screeched to a halt in the stadium car park. Cinderboy pulled on the pink mask and ran towards a big open door. When he looked around, he was standing, dun dun dun, right in the middle of the pitch. The crowd cheered in excitement as the mysterious pink masked player charged onto the field and headed straight for the ball. He skillfully tackled the other players, flicking the ball into the air with his left foot and sprinting towards the goalpost. Then, to the amazement of the Royal Palace fans, kabam, he shot it into the back of the net. Oh my goodness. The man in the mask is magic. Everyone else is tragic. The crowd went wild. Only ten more minutes to go. Cinderboy manoeuvred the ball around the pitch as gracefully as a dancer at a fairy tale ball. Then kaboom! Cinderboy scored again and kablam! He headed the ball into the back of the net. Kawump! He bounced it into the goal with the tip of his glass studded boot. The stadium roared with applause. On a bench at the side of the field, the injured Royal Palace captain and Eddie Prince, the team manager, stared in disbelief. Who 
whoever that player is, they said, we need him for our team. Before long, the score was equal, 10 all. But soon, there were only seconds left to play and the ball was at the wrong end of the field. There they are, look. I think they want him on, his, on their team. Cinderboy noticed the referee put the whistle to his lips. Oh, what's he got to do, remember? TV Godmother, help me, he whispered. One last time, Cinderboy dived towards the ball. With a mighty swing, he kicked it so hard that one of his glass-studded boots flew off and then tumbled to the ground. The ball shot upwards like a rocket. The whole crowd rose to their feet. Is he going to do it? The rival team stood open-mouthed as the ball soared like a bird through the sky. At the other end of the field, it began to fall. It bounced once then dropped effortlessly into the centre of the net. <gasps> Look at them all. They're like, oh, what is happening? Royal Palace had won the cup final. The crowd went ballistic. A thousand pink caps were thrown into the air. Eddie Prince raced onto the pitch to sign up the mystery player. But what's he got to do when the final whistle goes? But Cinderboy, remembering the promise to his TV godmother, ran out of the stadium as fast as his one boot would carry him. But to his dismay, when he reached the car park, he found only the battered old sofa where the pink limousine had been. And poor old Cinderboy had to push the sofa home. Right, we're going to stop there and we're going to see next time in part three. Is he going to make the team? Is his family going to find out he left the house? Who knows? See you next time. Bye.